Hey, everybody. Welcome back for the Clearing the Crease podcast powered by Bodog.eu. I'm James Sabalski along with the CNC Hockey Factory, the Calder winner, Andrew Raycroft, the Cup winner, Mike Commodore, Razor and Kami in the house. We got a jam-packed show lined up for you. Coach is already in the hot seat. We're only in November, but we're going to kick off this show with some hockey royalty, a two-time Stanley Cup champion, a Conn Smythe winner, and a freshly inducted 2023 Hall of Famer, former Calgary Flames goaltender. And how about this one? I totally forgot about this one. Former Florida Panthers great Mike Vernon. <laughs> that was a very short stint. <laughs> I love, you know, that's one of my favorite games to play when you look at certain players and, you know, it's like former Toronto Maple Leaf Ron Francis, right? And like that little yeah. stop and you go, wait a second, Florida Panther, like you're there for a good time, not a long time, right, Mike? Yeah, they uh, actually, it was good. They had a pretty good team there. And uh, unfortunately, we uh, we came up against New Jersey first round and uh, uh, they uh, they demolished us <laughs> how'd you end up in florida bernie i can't remember i was looking through you went to san jose florida and then back to calgary yeah, right yeah they traded me or just at the end of february i guess some somewhere in there they've had uh, trevor kid went down they had a bunch of injuries uh at the goaltending position and uh, we had steve shields that was playing quite a bit in san jose and uh Daryl was the coach and uh, you know, I was, Daryl came to me and he goes, you're going to start playing a lot more coming up and things like that. And uh, it was funny. And then I get the call that from my agent that I was, they're thinking about moving me and things like that. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. I can't do anything about it. And uh, we were in St. Louis and I get the knock on the door. And it was Daryl Sutter. And he goes, I guess you know why I'm here. And I says, yep. And he goes, uh, can I come in for a minute? I said, sure. He goes, I can't believe we're going to go into playoffs with a rookie goaltender. And I says, yeah, I, you know, my third year with San Jose, I felt good about my game. And I was, you know, Daryl had kind of said, you're going to start playing a lot more. I had just a good feeling. We had a good team then. And your numbers uh, were good, good, Mike. Like in San Jose, yeah. you had good numbers. And we had a good team. We had a really good team. And uh, Dean Lombardi decided to trade me and uh, Ragnus and the defenseman too. And Rags was a really good defenseman too. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out for San Jose. And we went on. But no. uh, it would have been nice if we would have stayed to see if we could have made a a, a cup run because our, our we had some good depth on our team, some good young guys like Patrick Marlowe, Sturm, and Olin Nolan. Mm -hmm. We we had a good team, and I was excited about where we were headed. And uh, unfortunately, they decided to make a move. What uh, and then so off the floor, and was that that correct me if I'm wrong? That'd be your second run in with or like with Trevor Kidd, no? Because that ha was in yeah. Calgary too, correct? Yeah, but he was he was injured and he was done for the year. And oh, okay. uh, so, yeah, Trevor was a, a first round pick uh, to Calgary Flames. And then uh, he came in and I got booted out of Calgary and sort of speak. And then, you know, <laughs> but uh, Trevor, Trevor, did, he, he played very well in Florida. And, you know, they had a, a good team there, too. And uh, yeah. we just uh, just couldn't get over the Jersey Devils. Uh, you're not the only team. No, <laughs> I know. I have the path of destruction. Times. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, can we go all the way back? Uh, you, just where your career started and how it started a couple years in the minors, a cup of tea here, a cup of tea there, and then getting settled on what was would be definitely now a dynasty in the 80s. I mean, it was you, it was Calgary, it was Edmonton, it was Montreal, and you guys won everything at that at that end of the 80s um, or were battling with each other. But just talk about the start of your career and, and what it was like playing <laughs> against those players and those teams and those those series. It made wow. you run us through your first training camp too, Vernie. You told me that story. It's pretty funny. Well, oh, perfect. yeah. Um, my first <laughs> training camp, Pierre Paget comes out with a – a little booklet, it's not that thick. It's on fitness. 
So, you know, being a young guy and I, I do everything. And- I do the running, I do the working out, I do all that stuff. And we get to training camp, we're at Max Bell Arena. We're supposed to go for a five mile run and I'm ready to go. And there Pat Riggins walking around in a towel and he's got a, a bit of a bowl of jello as a belly. And uh, <laughs> I'm like going, what the heck is going on here? And, you know, I'm this standing there. And, Brad Marsh, uh, he comes out, hey, Bernie, how you doing? I'm good, Brad, how you doing? And I look down, he's got a pair of Kodiak work boots on. And I go, you don't own a pair of runners? Nope, never had a pair of runners in my life. <laughs> he ran, he ran five miles in those Kodiak work boots. And that's a Jeez. big man. Like Marsh, he was a big man too. Yeah. Right? And then later he, uh, you know, he got into triathlons and things like that. But yeah, yeah the oh, that so he was could the big, run. Yeah, I, I, and for a big man like him too, yeah. he wasn't small. So, he but he, him, so. Uh, no, that was the fitness was starting to come into it, and then you know it was turning over to that direction. But it, I, it was shocking to me to know that these guys haven't worked out and. I guess that's why they were doing two a days and that's why they weren't getting paid big money and things like that. But uh, they were starting to turn the tide in the early eighties in the fitness, fitness part of it with the Calgary flame organization. So I, you know, and to go on further, I spent about two and a half years in the minors uh, between Colorado flames, Moncton, Salt Lake and Moncton and back to Calgary. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was, an eye opener, you know, the miners, it's, it's a bit of a grind. And, uh, you know, I remember one of my first games with the Calgary flames in 83, 84, it, I didn't start, but I went in for Don Edwards. Um, I think I played 11 minutes. I let in four goals. Goal. Well, save percentage. 80s was hockey, huh? Point three three three. Save percentage was twenty two point two two. Um. Yeah. That was uh, that was interesting. And then I go back to the minors. I I spent about uh, another two years in the minors after that. But just trying to figure out how I'm going to play in this game, and and stop these. You know. Edmonton Oilers, all these great players. And it's, you know, it weighs on your mind, but you try to push yourself as best you can and uh, try to develop your skill. And then I got a break. Uh, a couple of years later, the Flames were on 11 game losing streak. And I had been called up previously uh, to play the Russians. And we won that game 3 2. And Nadja Bob was the coach, and he was so excited to beat the Russians. And things like that. And the 11 game losing streak continued and they called me back up again. And uh, we tied Vancouver, I think it was four, four. So we broke that streak. I finished the season with the Calgary flames, played about 17 games and then went on uh, into the playoffs and played the Montreal Canadians and Patrick Waugh for uh, the Stanley cup finals in 85, 86 years or so unfortunately we lost that but uh, that was kind of the turning point for myself uh, to get my foot in the door and uh, kind of establish myself and uh, then the next part was you got to try to stay there because everybody's after your job (laughs) yeah yeah keeping it Vernie I mean you're from here played junior here drafted by the flames like were you I guess two parts I mean, obviously, I'm sure there were a lot of positives. If you could go back, which, I mean, and, and I know it worked out the same way, but I mean, you really didn't really leave the air, correct me if I'm wrong, until you went to Detroit. And back coming up with the Wrangler, were you like around the Flames much? Do you think that played a big part in you getting drafted by the Flames? Like, how much were you guys around each other or uh, much at all or no? Well, when I first got drafted by the Calgary Flames, I was internally, I wasn't that excited. Okay. Uh, I. Really? Because I played all my hockey in Calgary. I played junior in Calgary. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on me in junior even, uh, things like that. And I, you know, you just want to maybe go somewhere else and see how it goes. But uh, I look back on it now, and that was probably a good thing for me that I was still here in Calgary. And because uh, it pushed me 
uh, to try to be better, uh, to work on my game. There was demands out there of me. And I, you know, I either. Mike, did you just... stay at home? Did, like, did, would oh. you, did you stay close to family at that point? Or, were, or did you try to get out on your own, uh, even though you're in your hometown? Well, I, I lived at home until I became up with the Calgary Flames. And then I went and got my own place. But uh, I mean, look at my having my family around me and home cooked meals and things like that, yeah, you know, nice. was kind of nice, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, so like I said, it, you know, these things kind of push you, push your buttons to, you know, you either suck it up and you try harder and you, you try to figure out this game and, and go forward or you just quit. And uh, I didn't have the quit in me and I, I just really wanted to play hockey. So I, I continue to push myself. Uh, yes, there was demands. Yes, it was, you know, tough on me. I'm proud that we won a cup here. We had good teams, uh, but it's just one of those things. And uh, they say you should switch your job every seven years. Well, I was good nine years with the Calgary Flames, and then I got traded. So I was actually uh, looking forward to that, and I thought it was very timely. Um, and, you know, to move on, that was that was fine. And that's part of the game. And uh, I accepted that and, uh, you know, and glad it went that way. And we went on and won a cup in uh, in Detroit. So it was uh, it was great. Now, you know, you win a cup 10 years apart from one another. Huh. <laughs> that's something. I, I mean, I'd look at it and go, wow, most guys, when they win their cups, it's within four years, but 10 years apart. That's so I, that was, that's a good feeling. And I think personally, there was a lot of satisfaction in that, that I, I went somewhere else and we, you know, I was on a great team, but we did win. And that was, that, that felt good for me personally. Bernie, I, I gotta just jump in on, and just on that journey, you know, so much was made about that 1980s battle of Alberta. Right. And you know, history talks about the Oilers dynasty as maybe the greatest hockey dynasty ever with, you know, you look at the Hall of Famers on that team. But, you know, that Flames core and what you ultimately won with an 89 was a stacked roster. And we've had some of your former teammates on the show here in the past as well. But at what point, like, was there ever a point that as as a Calgary team kind of looking at that Oilers group of rock stars and is there a point that do you ever fear them or, or, or just overcame that where we can beat them? Obviously you had that series where, you know, the, the Steve Smith moment and, and you finally win, you get to the cup finals, you alluded to, but fall into Montreal that first time before winning in 89. But was there, was there sort of slay the dragon moment, if you will, for, for you guys with Edmonton, because the headlines were in Edmonton, but you finally as a Calgary team showed that, Hey, you know what? We're right there. Well, I think that uh, it started with Cliff Fletcher and Cliff built his team. And if we're going to go anywhere, we got to get through Edmonton. So I got to build my team around uh, how are we going to build, beat Edmonton Oilers. And, uh, you know, we he started up the middle. He had Joel Otto that goes against Messier. Yeah. He had Doug Gilmore goes against uh, Gretzky. He had Joe Neuendijk goes against, oh, McTavage. That's a good, you know. so. <laughs> He built that team. Uh, we we had good size, Brian McClellan, and like we had a big defense. And I, I remember even like unfortunately Gary Suter got injured. He broke his jaw, and Rob Ramage stepped in. And oh, yeah. Rob Ramage played power play, penalty killing, regular shift, and he was outstanding. And uh, you know, even when they traded him the next summer to Toronto, I was like, "What are you doing? This guy was unbelievable." But we had that team with Brad McCrim. We had tough team and we had a talented team there. And it was, uh, and then to move on from that, it was like Badger Bob instilled in us because Badger wasn't there when we beat Edmonton out. But the previous years before Badger Bob instilled in us that we were the underdog and underdogs can still win. I remember him taking us to, after a pregame meal, went around the corner to a movie theater and he bought all the tickets to the theater. And we went in there and we watched Rocky 
And he's like, and then we're, you know, getting all pumped yeah. up. We're like, well, Fight we're anybody. The un- yeah, we're the, we're the underdog. And uh, Badger Bob played a lot on that, the psychology of it. And uh, I remember even at practice one day, he brought out a left-handed goalie and he put him in a, a Edmonton Oiler jersey and said, like, get in that guy, shoot on him. That's like shooting on Grand Fury. It's just little things like that. And it was, it was and he grabbed your imagination and he made you a believer. And I think that just carried on uh, into the following years. And Terry Chris was our coach and things like that, but just that sort of thing. And they made believers of us. And th- we actually thought we could beat Edmonton. We just had to go do it. And we just couldn't take a, we couldn't take a shift off because we knew Edmonton was capable, very capable of capitalizing on us. And, uh, you know, then it just goes on and we get that goal late in the game and things like that. And we hang on. And I remember even Curry in the slot and gets a, gets a shot off and he dings it off the crossbar. And I'm like, Oh my, (laughs) they could have tied it right there type thing. So, uh, it, it was a fun series. It was a battle, and it uh, it was it was just awesome. And uh, those those are good memories. And it, it, the Battle of Alberta was something. Yeah. That's when, Besides that's ultimately when winning, Vernie, what was what was your best? What's the what's the moment? What's the 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 best memory for you in '89? Uh, '89, the best memory I think or. You know, you we we win the cup in Montreal, which was never done before. Still to this day, has never been done. The Montreal Canadiens losing a, a cup in their own building, but I think it was uh, getting on the plane and flying home. It was just us. It was the management. It was the players, and we celebrated on there and they, on the on the plane and things like that. We weren't getting dragged off by our families or anything else. It was just us in the room and or on the plane and celebrating on the way back. And that was, uh, that was a special part. You guys run out of beer on that flight? Well, that was funny because we, we, were, back in the, we were back in the plane up and Jack Maloney was with the, he was with the uh, Air Canada at the time and he ran the thing. And anyway, he goes up to the pilot, he goes, Ah, move the plane back in. Why? There's not enough beer on the flight. So we pulled it back in. And we, we got a few more cases on the plane. It's a long flight. It's a long flight. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a long flight. Bernie, I got a question for you. Obviously, you've had a Hall of Fame career. That's no doubt about that. Amazing career. I mean, Stanley Cup in 89, won another cup with the wings, Conn Smythe to boot. What do you get asked more about? Either one of those cups, the Conn Smythe or fighting Patrick Waugh. <laughs> well, it's funny in in, in Detroit that was when massive. I just Detroit, saw the show again last night. It was awesome. That's a, ahead, there's sorry. a height discrepancy there too. Oh yeah, yeah. Bernie's yeah. right in there. <laughs> well, it, it was funny when the the Hall of Fame announcement came out in the Detroit paper. I saw the clip, and it says Vernon gets selected to the Hall of Fame 2023. And it had me fighting with Patrick Waugh on it. <laughs> forget Not a the picture with the Conn Smythe. Smythe. No, no. Smythe picture. <laughs> Stanley no Cup, cop. no Conn Smythe <laughs> like Patrick Waugh. Well, that sums it up right there. That's yeah. the Detroit fans. They're, they're tough there. They like, you know, look at Bobby Probert and Joey Kosher. Those guys were, were tough as nails. Yeah, compare no. that, like, compare the, those Just those a sexy wins. ball, just to yeah. go off yeah. of that. Just your intersection with Patrick Waugh from 86 what's what's your relationship with him are you friends with him were you friends or did you hate each other all the way through do you did you shake each other's hand in the hall of fame what what's that like because I I hadn't really put it all together the, the the you talked about the 10 years in between cups the 10 years in between battling Patrick in different ways the parallel right yeah 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 well Calgary and Montreal had a great rivalry and uh the new year's Eve game and things. And it was like, you know, hyped up really well. And it, you know, that way it was great. It was a great rivalry too, even though it was long distance and, and obviously different conference. Um, you just, 
I enjoyed playing against guys like Patrick Watt because he was one of the best goalies in the league. I love playing against Grant Fuhr, and it challenged me. Uh, so y- you just have that little built-in rivalry. Obviously, I'm not shooting on him, and he's not shooting on me, but you just – try to keep your team in it and try to uh, try to win the game. And then you move on to Detroit and he goes, he goes to Colorado. And then we have that uh, battle with Colorado and just happened to have a fisticuff with them and, <laughs> and things like that. But that's just the emotion. And that's just the competitiveness within Patrick and myself. And, you know, that's just the way it goes. When he leaves the crease, I have to leave the crease type thing at, I remember skating out there. I'm like, Patrick, why are you doing this? <laughs> you know, I had to skate out there and I, I had, I don't know, it was Adam Foote's arm and he looked at me and started laughing. And then <laughs> next thing you know, Patrick, then we square up and, and go at it. But, uh, you know, I, Patrick and I, we don't contact each other. Uh, if we see each other, very mutual, shake hands and, and talk and things like that. Uh, you know, I, I respect him. He, he competes day in and day out. And he, he's, uh, he's a feisty one and he, he, uh, likes to compete. So I, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's, uh, it's a great quality to have and, and he can, he can show it. He's got uh, a few Stanley cups under his belt. <laughs> he does. Can you, can you compare or contrast, like, obviously you win in 89, there's a real nice moment for you have that sort of win one for Lanny sort of mindset, I guess, in some respects, but you know, a lot of guys who had grown up together, you know, some veteran guys on that team, a lot of young guys as well with the flames. And then you look at Detroit where, you know, they overcome this, you know, decades and decades long slump without a cup. And there's a, there, there had been a team that had been knocking and knocking for years and, and you talk about your sort of gap, almost a decade between winning cups. Can you contrast those two wins and what they were like? They must have been completely different. Well, they were. You know, I was a, still a young goaltender, what, 24 years old in, in Calgary when we won. And uh, in Detroit, 34 years old type thing. So uh, they were both different, uh, both great teams. Um and it just, you know, it takes luck and the right chemistry and things like that. When I first went to Detroit, we we lost to Jersey uh, the, in the final round. And, you know, the next year, Chris Hosgood played and we lost to, I believe it was Colorado. And the third year, and Chris Hosgood was playing a majority of the games. And I started to play a few more. And Scotty says, you got to get ready and stuff like that. And, uh you know, he, he, Scotty kind of believed in me a bit and he says, I'm going, he had a gut feeling. He wanted to go with the veteran and, uh, uh, and go like that. So I, I was well rested. I was going into that, uh, that playoff year and our first game was against St. Louis, I believe. And we lost two one. And I thought I'm going to lose the net. I'm going to lose the net. And I didn't, he put me back in there and, uh, you know, we won and we just, we kept going. But uh, I think that year I only had four losses in playoffs. So it was, I got myself on a roll and it was, it was just, uh, it was fun. It was, I had a ton of energy. Um, it was, it was great. And the two, they're both different, but they both mean so much to me. And they're, they're just different situations, but it was uh it it was it was phenomenal being on a, a you know playing for an original six team too, and uh, and playing in that atmosphere at Joe Lewis and uh, they they are hockey crazy fans in Detroit and it was it, it was fun it was a lot of fun. I want to touch on uh, I've never met him I mean I met most of, most of the guys in eighty nine team Bernie and I hang out a little bit here in Calgary I've never met I, I would like to meet him at some point Al McKinnis. Um, was his, uh, I'm assuming, I mean, was his shot all it was cracked up to be? Was it, did he take it easy on you a little bit? And crap, he could have been ripping that at you all the time. If it was as hard as everybody said, I mean, was, was that everything I've heard? Um, actually Al and I were drafted the same year. So we were, we're really good friends. And then, uh, he would take it easy on me. There's no doubt. Okay, and, uh, nice. yeah, he, okay. he was, uh, 
I, I, been killing your I remember one year we had a goalie named Doug Dadswell. And he would just, oh, <laughs> unfortunately, he took the brunt of Al McGinnis' a slap shot. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't pretty uh, sometimes, but uh, it, it was interesting. I remember we were playing Montreal, I guess, in the finals in 80s. Wow. I don't know what, yeah, probably 89. Too many file it. Too many finals yeah, to remember. Finals. What a, I'm like, this, oh, okay. what a, what a nice luxury. Able to not remember the finals. <laughs> I, I remember just Patrick getting, always going down and just when Al McGinnis had, goes down into the butterfly and just gets there. And I used to say to Al, I said, Al, he's just going to the butterfly. If we have any traffic in front, just pick the go top corner, or go get the puck up a little higher and, and he he did. He was, uh, I think that year, he beat Bobby Orr's record for most points for a defenseman. And then he won the Consmite uh, trophy that year. But mm-hmm. he he was very accurate with his shot too. Just not the hard slap shot. It was the accuracy. And uh, Al had a, like the thing just came up, to, his stick would come up to his chest. It wasn't that long of a stick. And he would just get it in tight and, he would possess a lot of power with it. And, uh, and the curve was ridiculous. It started at the heel and went to the toe. And I remember in St. Louis, <laughs> or not in St. Louis, we're, I was with the Red Wings and uh, we were playing at Joe Louis Arena. And somehow Al McGinnis had a breakaway on me. And I'm like, oh. okay, chopper. All he's got, he shoots. He never, he can't go to his backhand. He's never <laughs> done a backhand pass or a backhand shot in his life. And he <laughs> comes down on me and he goes to his backhand and he scored. And after the game, I'm like, what is that? Oh, I knew exactly, Bernie, you thought I was going to shoot a hundred times because I've never done a backhand. <laughs> <laughs> and I surprised myself I could even do it. So we had a good chuckle over that one. <laughs> uh, what's your plan for the Hall of Fame, Bernie? The last one for me. What do you got going on? That's going to be a busy weekend for you. Oh my! Lots of family. Yeah, what do you got? I it it's nonstop. Uh, yeah. I just got the full itinerary uh, yesterday and looked at it, and I'm like, holy smokes! They got you doing a lot, but it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be overwhelming. There's uh, a lot of media, a lot of things going on, uh, but I do have a lot of family coming down, a lot of friends. Uh, my my wife and children are hosting a, a little celebration at the Hockey Hall of Fame. Nice. So we've invited a bunch of people and uh, it will be great to see some uh, some old hockey players and some good friends that I've had along the way that I haven't seen in a while. Awesome. I, I guess I just I, I just to, to piggyback off that one, Mike, you know, you have a great career. You win multiple Stanley Cups. You put up this body of work, you know, your playing career has been over for 20 years. What does it mean to get the call? It's not like you're just freshly out of the game, right? You know, to wait for this (laughs) call, Uh, you know, can you put into context, you know, what, what this moment means as, as someone who's kind of lived a life and, you know, has a, you know, can appreciate just the weight of this moment. Well, I think as a, as a kid growing up playing hockey, all you dream about is a uh, Stanley cup and uh, you don't dream of the hockey hall of fame. Cause that's just unreachable. It, you can't even go there. Um, so 21 years later uh, when they did announce it, 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 it means the world to me, my family, and uh, also my parents. Um, they would, it, it's just, it's what we grew our own. It's what I've done my whole life was play hockey and uh, to top it off with uh, the induction to the Hockey Hall of Fame, to be put in a a class where uh, all these legends are. And uh, I, I'm just honored to be, uh, be in there with such a great group of individuals. And uh, I'm just excited about it. And, like I said, it, it means the world to me. Well, it's well deserved, Bernie. Congrats. Well deserved. Yeah, awesome. here. Absolutely. Well deserved. I got goosebumps. Thank you. I know. That. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I know. I that was awesome. Combs, where are you? Are you in Calgary right now? Yeah, I'm in Calgary right now. Yeah. For now. Okay. For now. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> I thought you'd be down in Arizona golfing. 
couple more weeks. I'm going to drive out of here probably the 22nd. Yeah, a couple more weeks. I'm running out of you things know, to you do. Know well, the tour starts in two weeks. Yeah, tour starts. There you go. Perfect. Well, um, thanks, Vernie. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. So what do you guys got going on? What's going on with the coaching in the NHL right now? Ooh, well, yeah, we're going to touch on that. What you, you're, yeah. you're welcome you to hang out with us if you want. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, do you watch a lot of hockey? Do you watch a not, or a little I, bit? Do you he, like the game? Do you like the game now? I like asking the guys that have played the generation before. Do you like the game now? Um, or there's or some even better. A, there's some aspects of yeah. that I do like. Yep. There's some that I don't. And the one I'm going to start with the one I don't like. I when you watch a game, there's not a lot of body contact. Um, what I like about the game is the talent level the skill level of all the, like the goalies of the, of the players and how quick the game is and things like that. The skill level is remarkable. Um, I do watch hockey once in a while. I, I try not to go down to the, to rink to watch it. I'll watch it on TV because I can, uh, I like watching Edmonton because of uh, Connor McDavid and dry saddle. I, I mean, they're Are you just allowed amazing. to say that? Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> So, I'm just being legend? honest. Okay, I'm being honest. I mean, I you sit there and watch the skill level of these guys. It, it's remarkable, and uh, so I go back and forth. I'll, I'll watch whatever's on TV here. You know, if there's a sport on, I'll watch it. Type thing. So uh, I don't get right into it. I don't listen to a lot of the radio talk shows and the sport talk shows and things like that. No, but uh, I'll watch the game. Nice. So you, you are you going party. tonight, or are you, are you well? You just said you're. Yeah, you don't go to many games, do you, Vern? No, I no, I don't. But uh, I like. I'll watch the game probably tonight. I really enjoy watching uh, Saros, the goaltender. Nice. He, yeah, he's, he yeah, he's good. He's only five five eleven, but he's he's unbelievably quick. And I I I watched him last year. I was at the the dome and watched him live, and I think he had about forty five saves, and they won the game, but. He he's I, I I like watching the goaltenders, I, I really do. I I still do for that. I you know and uh, and even Markstrom this year he's playing really well and uh and it's just it's just neat to watch these guys to see what they're doing and uh, things like that. So I don't I still enjoy the game. Yeah, well come by tonight, Bernie, if you want. I'll buy you a drink. I turned 44 today, so I'm going to go have a couple. Hey, You're more no tomorrow. way. Hey, happy birthday. Yeah. Are you going to hey, hey. be Come up on in by. the suite? The alumni suite? I'll be suite? up in the suite. Yep. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go tonight. I'm going to go tonight. So come on by if you want a cocktail. Oh, okay, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> or a few of them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. Thanks, Vernie. Okay, guys, take care. Thanks a lot. Thank awesome. you. Thanks Congrats for coming again. on. He is a Hockey thanks. Hall of Famer, Mike Vernon, joining us here on the Clearing the Crease podcast, powered by Bodog.eu.